Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. Welcome to our trading room, Forex trading, and we're going to take a look at the charts. We're going to take a look at uh, the currencies and see what they have to do today on the 11th of December. First of all, as always, though, we're going to take a look at the PowerPoint and explain, first of all, the risk disclaimer, and uh, that explains that trading for exchange, just like any global financial markets or products, is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. So thank you for your attention on that. We're going to be taking a look at this Forex trading with uh, the following steps. We want to define the trend. Even if you're trading against it, we, we still want to know if there's a trend, and if so, which direction. Then we want to look for the opportunity that could be a uh, uh, different from uh, depending of course on the strategies and the theme of the day I'm not sure what today's theme is I woke up a bit later than usual in fact somehow my telephone battery died during the night and the alarm clock didn't uh, ring somehow so it was a bit strange but we're going to be taking a, a look at filters of course because you want to check if there's anything that could block the trade from developing if you're for example trading with the trend you don't want to trade it if there's uh, a lot of divergence then you might, uh, of course, see good clues for reversals. So then you want to avoid the with the trend trades, for example. Then you want to establish a trigger. What is the, what kind of thing are you looking for on the charts that could make you want to uh, to buy? Is it a certain price level? Is it a certain fib? That's the trigger. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to enter at that specific spot, because you can still uh, vary that with the different entry method. For example, the trigger might be a fib but you might be looking for a candlestick pattern at the FIB before really entering. So with that said, let's head over to, first of all, the, uh, the calendar. And we'll do that right now. In the meantime, you'll hear me drink coffee because I didn't have my coffee yet this morning. And I always have one in the morning. So <laughs> as I said, I uh, was a bit later than usual. So. Let's take a look at, uh, didn't even have breakfast, in fact. I'll have that afterwards. <laughs> Let's take a look. We have today chart pattern trading. That's true. I forgot. So tomorrow we have intraday trading. And in the evening, of course, we have the webinar oscillator exposed with Tarantula. Tarantula has a webinar tonight, I think, too, about, yes, about pivot points. Trading with breakouts, ranges, and trends. So, it could be very interesting. With that said, let's head over to your dollar. First of all, as always, and we'll go to pound and yen, and then anything else that seems interesting at the moment. Let me, uh, first of all, just quickly check if you hear me properly. Okay, cool. One second. Sorry for this delay. Your dollar, in any case, uh, somehow I cannot, very annoying, I cannot, uh, I, where are these? I lost the, <laughs> this is stupid, I wanted to see how, if we have any questions and answers, ah, oh, there it is, good, but then I lost the box, so I was looking for the box so I could see what your answers are, goody good, perfect, thank you all uh, for your uh, confirmations, so with that said, you're a dollar, we pushed up above the 886 in fact, so that's always dangerous where you have you know, long-term levels, most cases they work, but sometimes the short-term pressure kind of like pushes the, the price through those levels. And that was ha that's what happened uh, yesterday. In fact, we had uh, the uh, bull flag here, and uh, that bull flag broke to the upside for continuation. So if we then take a look, let me just open, ah, good. I thought it didn't have my drawing to open, but I do, in fact. 
good. This bull flag, that's what I meant. We had a break of that. So that is a bit surprising in a way because the 886 fib would think it has more effect. But the fact that we did break through the 886 fib actually shows that, okay, we stopped at the 886 fib, but boys and girls, the banks are saying probably that uh, that is not the reversal. So we're probably indeed upside because if that would be downside from here, then, excuse me, then the 886 fib would probably be the last retracement one would expect. Now, of course, we still have double top potential, and obviously the top could still be a resistance, but the fact that the 886 fib only caused price to do this is a quite a shallow retracement, very small pause. That means the, 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 the financial world saw the 886 fib, but decided that it's not really that important. You don't, oh, do you, you do not see my drawing? I draw two green lines on the chart now. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. Um, let me try to fix that. Ah, it's paused. Okay, somehow. Thank you for that warning, uh, Yano. Yes, good. So the 886 at the green line, at the trend line too, because if you if you if we put look at the weekly chart, we can see we could put a trend line like this. Obviously, there's a, a small wick here outside. That's okay, I think. So price is now pushing more or less right at it. The top, where's the top? Right at the yearly high of 138.30. Now, yearly high, of course, is is important. And on the daily, we do have a bit of a wick. So, yes, the 886 got broken, but is it still a fantastic buying spot? No, obviously not really, in my opinion. Although we do have some space up to 138.30, there's not much space, right? Relatively, at least. But maybe good enough for intraday trade, I'm not saying, but it's anyhow still, no matter how you look at it, still at a very high resistance. There's nothing necessarily wrong with buying high and selling higher. That's when we make a profit, in fact. But in this case, when we buy high and selling higher is risky because there's a very big resistance, then the chances of that succeeding, of course, are uh, decreasing. We take a look at the four-hour chart now. So obviously we don't have a chart pattern here on the euro dollar. That is our main focus. We might have a small rising wedge like this. That that could be, but to be honest, I don't know if it's a rising wedge or just a, a good chart uh, channel. In fact, because if you put a line like this and then a line like this, for example, it depends how you do it. This looks maybe a bit like a rising wedge if you do it like this. It could easily be a channel as well. I want to take a look at the moving averages. Yeah, let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, because it's still very early in the day, to see a bit of a pause here, a move down, and then a bounce. If we do do that, an entry above here with the stop loss here, I think makes a lot of sense. With the target of 138.20 maybe, and trail stop the 50-minute world. That's I think, would be the best plan on the euro dollar. And uh, everything seems, seems set up for that continuation. We broke a resistance level. We still have some space to the next resistance level. We see a trend, obviously. 
the one-hour world and the 50-minute world are very much in an uptrend aligned with the higher time frame. So you got that kind of synchronous, like, symphony here or harmony. The only thing is we have to be very realistic about our TPs and what we can expect out of the market because, as I already said earlier, we are, in any case, whatever, however we look at it, very close to that resistance. So that would be my plan, but we can monitor if we get a fractal here, uh, to, you know, together. Uh, let me take a look at the Forex calendar, in fact, first of all. Greek unemployment rate today in two hours. That's uh, unfortunately very high for them, 27%. Wow, horrible number. Um, New Zealand interest rate later on, 12 hours from now, and otherwise just some modest uh, European news, like some uh, Italian auctions, CPI on the Euro, Portuguese, and some light dollar news, like crude oil inventory. So nothing major today that could affect the market, let me say this way. So that's my plan on the euro. Let's keep an eye on that. The pound dollar. Let's see. The pound dollar yesterday. Ah, just really, yeah, that was here. Basically, just been bouncing back and forth. We are talking about the fact that it could bounce off a 382 fib yesterday. That uh, didn't really happen. It missed it by a bit here that made a double bottom and has been oscillating between these lines. So we do have a bit of a chart pattern here. That's uh, in a way a, a potential wedge or it is a wedge. Let's see which way it breaks out. If it breaks out to the downside, uh, that is currently counter trend. If it breaks to the upside, that is with the trend. Um, now obviously the with the trend scenario is a lot easier to trade. We can expect uh, price to move to our target a bit faster and probably have more space to our target, uh, to a target. The FIB, I would say, is uh, limiting some downside potential because I wouldn't be surprised if the 38.2 axis support. And, you know, even a, an entry order there wouldn't be strange in my opinion. If an entry order is not, you know, if we can always monitor it live, if you're looking at the charts anyhow, you, we could keep an eye on it. If we see some interesting 15 minute bounce off the 382, then we can wait for a hook back and attempt a long for the uh, on this pound dollar. If price action just blasts and go, which I don't expect, but it could, and then it goes, stops a bit at the 50, makes a bear flag, then who knows, maybe make more downside, but that's still kind of trend. And I wouldn't necessarily expect the 382 not to provide some, or the 50 to provide some support. So that's why a, a short, upon the break of the chart pattern, wouldn't make, uh, I mean, it's possible. I'm not saying it isn't, but I know many traders that would, would trade this wedge both ways. So I don't want to limit one's vision here or necessarily say it's, it's a bad trade. Um, it isn't, but it's just my psychological view that is always looking with the trend. So I'm so geared towards that, that, you know, if I see something counter trend like that, then I kind of like automatically dismiss it. Um, but I know a lot of traders that would trade this chart pattern both ways. Um, it depends on your own experience, um, whether you want to do that or not, I guess. You know, sometimes these, these reversals go a lot further and we don't get the bounce here, for example. But I have, for me, it's okay because I have the patience to say, okay, it didn't happen. I, w I was planning that trade. I took it. I didn't took it. If I didn't took it, of course, it's even better. And uh, I'll wait for a new setup. If you're trading the pound dollar day in, day out, then you probably wouldn't, you know, want to be so patient with certain opportunities maybe.
But to me, if I look at the one-hour chart, oh. If I look at the one-hour chart, this oscillator is very strong here recently and uh, could be a bit weaker than than this one here. But still, it looks to me, unless we really break uh, these bottoms here, to be honest, this looks like a very good impulse here and I wouldn't expect a lower downside than the 50 fib. If we break the 50 fib, we're also breaking these tops, <clears throat> which I would expect should act as support. If we break those tops, then uh, we could still we could still see a bounce at the long-term moving average, but I wouldn't expect. Um, let me say it this way: then the analysis does change a bit. I would have to reanalyze it because then maybe this is just one move up and we're doing something differently. So anything above here is definitely bullish. Anything below is kind of neutral in my opinion. And below the bottom would become uh, more bearish. Something like that. Obviously, if we move down and hook back like this and then start to break, then uh, we can easily, it's definitely possible to take that uh, bear flag break to the downside, then things have changed and we might have some head and shoulders here or something like that going on that uh, could aid that. At the moment it's too early in my opinion, so still bullish. If you look at the daily chart, we just broke out of that weekly resistance. This is the break, pullback and uh, continue. I wouldn't expect to continue to stop so soon, but you never know. Let's take a look at the yen. The yen is correcting, made a uh, smaller double top here, right in front of daily resistance as we know. The daily resistance causing the currency to stop once and twice and now currency is moving back to the bottom of the channel. As we were saying yesterday, the price has difficulties with breaking through resistance like that and will probably most likely retrace. And I had even this purple line here to say if it breaks below there, there's a good chance we'll retrace lower, although that was counter trend. That's what we've been doing, in fact, and we're moving down towards the bottom of the trend channel. The bottom of the trend channel and the bottom here support both bouncing spots for more upside potentially. Same story as yesterday. This is the one hour chart. From a, from a chart pattern perspective we had kind of a falling wedge here. Those are very nice. If you have falling wedges within an uptrend on a smaller time frame, those are great because we're, you're in a trend and you're getting a bullish chart pattern on a lower time frame, right? Bull flag, great as well, of course, with an uptrend. In my opinion, trend continuation patterns are great. I'm not so focused, I'm less focused on um, reversal patterns, but I, uh, I primarily use them as a method for me to watch out for with the trend trades, but of course other traders use them as uh, potential trade setups for reversal trades. I use them as a filter more to not take with the trend setups, but that all depends on uh, your own trading plan. Alrighty, so this is the dollar yen. If we put a fib on the first correction, that would probably be the smartest thing to do at the moment, to see where we could bounce. So I zoom in a lot. Let's put a fib here. See, we stopped at the 50 fib. So what is the target of that 50 fib? Minus 272 and the minus 618 and the minus 1000. Those are the targets where the minus 618 is a, is a high likely bouncing spot. These two. So 102, 102.35 could already be the bouncing spot.
that, uh, that is a likely area of, uh, of a bounce. Let me just check something. Let me change the template here. All the lines are gone, but that's okay. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to see is that if you look at the one hour perspective, we do have a down move here. So what we have to be careful of is that if we do bounce here, which I think the chances are high, we'll have to see how price responds when it, uh, when it gets up here. Do we make a bull flag after that? We'll probably continue higher. If price actually goes up, but kind of like in a more weaker fashion, and we get a fractal underneath the band here, that will maybe see more downside, in fact, to retest this, this bottom. So we we'll have to see how price responds when it gets here, if we get that, or if we get this kind of movement. And that's how, you know, as, as uh, price progresses, we get more information and we can judge better which of the two scenarios becomes more likely. Right? It's like a, it's like a decision tree. At the moment, the most clear clear to me is a bounce here or here. Whether that bounce will lead to a big upside depends on how price moves after that. Right. So as, the, as we progress in time, the decisions become, I mean, the possibilities expand. So it's like a tree, kind of like this. You know, and, and as you progress through time, there are more op, op, like possibilities. And eventually, it doesn't make sense to, to look so far ahead because there are too many things to look at. It's a bit like chess, right? One player plays this, then the other player plays that, and then the player plays that. So if you're player one, you're thinking, like, if I do that, and he does that, and I do that, and he does that, you can do that for a while, but most people give up after a few, uh, a few rounds because, or, you know, at some point in time, depending, of course, how much you play chess, because you just, it doesn't make sense to think that much ahead, right? In a, in a way, I mean, of course, Top chess players probably think ahead a lot of time, uh, very f deeply, but I'm not saying. But uh, but anyhow, I just wanted to make that comparison to uh, to this decision tree. So that's the Dahlia. Any questions on the uh, majors, maybe, or do you have a, a preference for any of the um, uh, other currencies? Personally, I as I said, I really didn't have any time to pre-scan it in the market, so I don't really know, I don't have any favorite list at the moment. I was uh, only able to finish the edit wave count this morning, and that's it. <laughs> so close says pound yen, yep, cool, we can do that. Already. Let me take let me take everything off. Otherwise, let's we'll start it uh, from scratch together. Weekly chart. Well, if we look at uh, the weekly, obviously, such a tremendous impulse. I mean, it's just it's quite fascinating, uh, and. It's just amazing to see how this is so trending. I remember when I was when it was back in 2011, and uh, my trading buddy and I were looking for for that bounce up actually, because we saw a falling wedge. There were many you know reversal signs, and uh, a potential for a trend was in the cards. It just took so long 
before it really happened. I mean, we were just a bit of ahead of the market. You know, we were just already saw this happening, but it just took so long to play out, and we were just you know get a bit impatient. If you if you see something that could be that grand, and it, it just takes time, so we're very happy when this finally happened, and then this deep pullback, and before it finally started, you can imagine how how long that took. But uh, we respect. Yeah, I wish, I wish, I wish I bought it just. But uh, things just take to um, realize. But if you look at this, just amazing. In fact, here's a chart pattern. Here's a chart pattern. Here's a chart pattern. Here's maybe a chart pattern. Recently, though. We can see that uh, we've had every week trending. So this is definitely trending mode. Every high is higher. Every low is lower. Uh, is higher. Sorry. So this week might be different, but this week candle hasn't closed yet. So we should not incorporate any of this information. is irrelevant. That weekly candle looks like a doji, but that really doesn't matter at all. Just in case you had doubts about that. And the, uh, look at the candle closes. All of them are very near the high, indicating that <clears throat> there's no selling pressure. The bulls remain controlled throughout the whole week. And there's uh, no doubt about that uh, who is in charge here, right? So very bullish. Uh, oscillator still turning up. And uh, the pound, of course, also helped being helping this uh, basically this pound yen push up not only the yen as we know because the dollar yen hasn't broken uh, I believe this top or was it maybe even this top it hasn't broken no this top so relatively you can see pound yen stronger you can see the band price very very much above it the only thing is that if it gets really far stretched from the band there's always the chance that price will eventually go back to the band like it did here, like it did here, like it did here. That's something we must face and, re and realize that that could happen. But it doesn't have to happen necessarily right here, right now, but it could. Obviously, um, the higher we get, the more likely that becomes. It's always difficult, though, to judge exactly where that is. So we have to judge, go through lower time frames to see if that could happen soon. We can take a look at this uh, FIB to see what the targets are on the weekly again. And refresh. Well, we hit the minus 618 recently, so I pushed through it, in fact. Not sure if that uh, will necessarily stop it, though. But So, yeah, obviously, if we hit so many targets, I mean, if we progress so fast, we will hit some targets. This is the monthly. We are at long-term uh, moving average, but we can easily poke through that. I'm not saying I wouldn't necessarily hold my breath for uh, the fact that it could stop right there. You see, it could poke through it easily. We are at the minus 272 of the monthly, though. But no clear resistance here on the left. This was just a major fall. And uh, there's no clear bottom that could act as resistance. Daily chart. Oh wow, that's a pretty strong fall indeed. And looking at that fall, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to uh, that this is uh, more impulsive, in fact, because this is a quite a, a burst indeed. Now, measuring momentum counter trend is always tricky because it could easily be a A B C, and sometimes waves. C are impulsive, 
that okay, could be misleading as well, but yeah, this is one of those times where a counter trend break, as I said, I don't like it, but there are definitely traders who traded both ways. Wouldn't be doing too bad indeed now. Big fall. There wasn't any news though, so quite funny. Quite an unusual fall. So many pips. <laughs> well, those things happen, but still, funny to see it, indeed. Thanks, Richard. So let's go back to the pound yen. Daily chart. I don't want to do all the fibs again. Uh, I don't think that makes much sense. It would just be a bit boring, in fact, probably. But, uh, oh, the euro fell too. Oh, yeah. You see, it's good we waited for this uh, fractal. For me, a fractal break above this would be still okay, although it's less pleasant that we made this this drop now. So I would, I don't think, yeah, we'll probably have to wait again. I, what, what I wanted to see, in fact, was the euro dollar bounce off these moving averages. Let me explain what I wanted to see. And then we'll break above with a stop loss here. But now that we've kind of reversed through those moving averages instead of bouncing off them, as we can see, uh, that changes the algorithm here or, or the, <laughs> the the thinking. So I would be more careful. So maybe this was the last push after this uh, 886 bull flag, and we are going to indeed finally make a retracement. Eventually, we will. I mean, we've had so much upside. We got to make some retracement at, at, at one point in time. It's just pushing up and up and up. Uh, but we want to be careful with uh, with finding that spot because you can see it's not easy to find it. Look, even the 886 didn't provide the resistance spot and it still made one move up move. So, but the impulse here maybe if we do break, I would say below this triangle like that. If we poke with a one hour candle through it, let's zoom in here. So we're not there yet. I mean, we really need a candle, a one-hour candle really poking through this, I would say. If there's a good, bearish candle, one-hour candle, it's a decent size, close near the low, you'll see the moving averages flip down like that. Then you might see like two smaller one-hour candles like this. Then I wouldn't be surprised to see the reversal happening indeed, some downside at least. But at this moment, I think it's still too early. Want to want to see a poke through these these bands, basically. Although looking at the momentum, it might be so, but it's always dangerous to look at the candle. Never forget that. So we have to look at 50 minute world really because the one hour isn't closed. So it's 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 never good to look at a candle that isn't closed because that could significantly change of course. The 50 minute does look impulsive though, just like the pound. But as I said, this is still a very short term time frame. So let's take a look. One hour chart. It would be good to look at the pound dollar too and the one hour candle. Let's see how that closes. We'll take a look in 40 minutes again. Pound yen daily. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do all those fibs, but you can see here price two using the band as a support, then accelerating away from it. For a chart, we have divergence between the tops, which means that there is a potential for price to go back to the long-term moving averages. That potential uh, is kind of more confirmed when price breaks through the band. Mind you, here we didn't have any divergence. So this poke through the band is still a retracement. 
and not a move to the moving averages. That's the difference. I hope that's clear. Only when there's divergence and then we have a poke through the band is there a pretty good chance we can go to the long term moving averages. If something like this happens, then a fall to that long term moving average is likely. Poke, what I'm showing here is a, a poke through the band, a weak retracement up, and continuation. If you do trade a reversal, reversals, uh, and if I trade reversals, in fact, then most of the time it's these types of reversals. It's trying to catch the blue part of this downside, the, the third part. Why? Well, because at least I know that certain things have happened, certain confirmations have happened. Whereas the first leg, it's difficult to, more difficult to catch because we don't know exactly where that, you know, it could still push up. We're, we're in a trending mode. That's the problem. We could still push up and higher than we think. Whereas if you have a, a good, imp, good divergence, good impulse to the downside, breaking with a lot of thrust through the moving averages and you have a weak upside, then the chances of one more downside are inc increasing. So let's see, we're close to it. We'll see how price, if price can push through the band or not. From a chart pattern perspective, I don't really see anything at the moment here. This is just an impulse. We did have maybe a small triangle here, right? But that's all the past. one-hour chart. You can see on the one-hour world, look, we had divergence. What happened? Price moved to the band, poked through it, made a weak correction, and used the band as resistance, and it's now moving to the long-term moving average. You see? This is, this is what I'm trying to show, actually, on the four-hour world, what could happen, and it happened on the one-hour already. Impulse poking divergence, impulse poking through the band, hook back to the band, therefore band not support but resistance, bouncing back to the moving average. Classical reversal. So in my opinion, we are more at a bouncing spot here or here, but probably the bounce will be mild and I would expect one more downside after that. The thing is though, because we're in uptrend, you never know. And it could also be not the blue-red scenario, but we could get something like this. And obviously then, a break to the upside is good. So personally, from this perspective, I would say a buy sooner or later would be uh, would make most sense, but uh, at these targets. But depends how how much you like these targets. If we fib the first move down, we can see we stopped at the 50. The minus 272 target is the target, just like the minus 618. And um, but it could be easy to minus 618 in this case because of this thrust, I would trust the minus 27 less and the minus 618 more. Uh, probably waiting for some price action confirmation a bit uh, would make sense here. It's very early in, uh, in the, uh, like, kind of in the turnaround stage. We're still pushing. So one way of doing it is looking for some one hour candlestick. The other way of doing it is waiting for some bounce here and a hook back for more upside.
Other ways of doing it is waiting for a bounce, hook back, and break above the fractal, in fact. Uh, let's take a look, Richard. Richard is uh, asking if this is uh, a five wave followed by ABC. And uh, yeah, this does look like a five wave, indeed. Well, it's actually very, it's, it's actually difficult to find. I mean, we can see five waves in this upside, but it has moved so impulsively that uh, it almost looks like just one straight arrow, you know what I mean? But yes, you could detect five waves like this, like that. It is possible, definitely. And within the third wave, we see five waves. And with, yeah, and within the five, fifth wave, we even see five waves. So very impulsive indeed. This could be an ABC back. That's one of the scenarios. And then we could see that bounce to the upside. Or we see, depending, if we get a weak correction, we could see one more correction down. Therefore, indeed, a long, sometime soon, definitely makes sense in a way. If we put a fib on the upside here, it's just that we have four hour divergence which we want to be careful of. That's why. That we can see a 50 fib and a minus 618 pretty close to each other. And price is pretty bullish and if the uh, bearish at the moment price action. I'm looking at the one hour chart. So then you want to be careful. You don't want to, we don't want to cut ourselves with this fall. Yeah, Bryn, you just, as, as, uh, as uh, kind of like an expression, you, you stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> because I just wanted to say, but good thinking uh, from your side, is that uh, if the pound is, is, we'll have to take a look at the pound too, how this thing is uh, developing because, um, you know, that definitely will influence that pound yen, of course. So that's a good thing to definitely link, absolutely. The yen too is moving down, so there could be some more bearish pressure um, on this pound yen. And I definitely don't want to encourage falling a cutting knife, even though we're in a major, major uptrend on the pound yen. Um, still want to be careful with with that potential bouncing area. And to me, looking at this, the, the fact that we've pushed through this band so much is warning me that we could definitely hit that minus 618, personally, from, I don't have any concrete statistics, but just from my own experience. Um, let's see, WAFO. I wanted to wreck you this morning, but as I said, I unfortunately overslept. But definitely the first, uh, no, after, after this I still have a meeting. After that I'm writing you for sure because I, wanted, I found your email um, interesting. I wanted to sh um, tell you something about that. But that will be a few hours from now for sure. And kind of reversals due to the year-end profit taking. Yeah, definitely because the question is, can the reversals lead to year-end profit taking? And uh, definitely the end of the year you will see um, different behavior, I think. Definitely a quarter end as well, of course. Not sure if year-end, I think there could be some year-end profit taking as well. I mean, for big, big players, they want to probably book their profit before the year-end indeed not have that floating, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, personally, I don't do that because I don't have these massive positions open that are, you know, months open, but I'm sure there are some um, players out there that uh, would like to close that before the year end. Makes a lot of sense to me.
But this, this, let's see, it's still 30 minutes left. I know it's tempting when you see a big bar like this, but we have to really wait. But it does look, uh, if it does close like that, I wouldn't be surprised to see two, two hours of small sideways move. And then if you look at the 15, probably the next fractal break could be already, uh, you know, not a bad uh, a short, in fact. Although it's still counter trend in my opinion. But we want to be careful. Oh, what is this? Ah, here. We want to be careful because because of the big trend to the under pound. Let's face it. There could easily be still one more push up. Let's see, bottom of triangle, uh, yeah, could be, could be good. Uh, trading, when, when you have a strong trend like this, the only problem is that sometimes the resistance here is less, is more vulnerable. That's the only thing. Um, so what I would like to, I mean, the only thing that really would matter to me is how price moves up as well. Um, looking at this bar, as I said, it, it does look very bearish, but I want to be careful with that, obviously. That's the only thing. But who knows, maybe, maybe that is, this was the very last push, I'm not saying. And uh, we're going to make finally a bigger retrace, but if you look at the four hour chart, then we obviously still have, for example, four hour band here. And we can see that the band has been uh, used as support. So we can easily be moving back to that support area. It could easily be a break, pull back, continue. And uh, that's the only thing I want to warn you for, that, that that too could happen. So. I guess we have to monitor, we have to wait really 27 minutes still and see how the one hour closes. And not only that, the one hour will give some information, but it's not holy either, right? Just because we have one hour bearish candle, we could see a bit more downside, but that bit could be limited because of the four hour uptrend. One thing, though, differently from this upside uh, was that uh, the upside here and here made sense. Here, of course, it was different because we had a weekly resistance. Here it made sense again because we broke it. And here it made sense because we had a good chart pattern. And still here it makes sense, in my opinion, because this looks like a hook back, so, but we do have divergence, that's the only thing. Potential divergence there. Plus, I, I like this AO reading, it's pretty strong, which leads to me that I would th still think that we got to break at this top, up to 165. So I would be careful with, I don't know, it's, I see your point and it makes sense, but only if you do the, if you do that kind of when it, when there's a trend on, the, on a higher time frame and you do the, this, this pattern resistance while there's an uptrend on a higher time frame, that's, that could be risky. That's all I want to say, basically. Maybe we could take a look at the, uh, the odd Aussie. Huh? Let's take a look at that.
let's see. Yeah, yesterday we had a break of this triangle. That break didn't go far as expected. That's how you can really plan how much space a currency has. By using fibs, support and resistance, moving averages, fib targets, trend lines, chart patterns, supply demand zones, you could judge that. You could take a look at, for example, this is a triangle, and a break to the downside is with the trend, a break to the upside is counter trend, and usually if it's counter trend, it will bump into a resistance pretty soon, or support a resistance, and that's what happened. But basically, what I'm warning for on the pound dollar, here too, we had a very bullish hourly candle, didn't we? Here too, we broke out of a chart pattern to the upside. Look. But what happened when we hit the 38.2, price stopped without any hesitation and reversed back. So the upside break, because it was a downtrend, didn't have much space and you got an up move of some 50 pips maybe, but then reversed back. This is what I'm thinking that could happen with the pound. So in the meantime, we're back to uh, the trend line. We're probably going to bounce off that trend line. And then either break or maybe indeed still more upside. We'll have to take a look at the long term. Um, the uh, long-term uh, 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 setup here, structure, to, to determine that. 382 is pretty shallow, but it definitely could fit within the current environment. Then again, if you look at the uh, four-hour chart, our band is flat, price is above that band. So one more upside, maybe to the 50 fib, to the long-term moving averages is possible, because if you look, we have divergence between the bottoms here, which means our target is the long-term moving averages, but not always do we get there. Price came pretty close it's at the top of this downtrend channel. So I would say either way is possible still. A break to the downside is, is good, but we probably want to see a break and a small bear flag, and the next break is probably the best, to be honest. Or if we do break above blue, we can see some small upside to the 50 fib, and then we should see a move down again. That is what uh, I'm looking for on this uh, AudioSD. It's, a, it's at a break or bounce spot now that we're approaching the purple trend line the bottom trend line here. If it breaks, that itself could be a good trade, but you might want to wait, wait for the pullback and continuation. So the trend line here is the trigger, but the entry, actual entry doesn't have to be, of course. Or we'll bounce off the trend line, which is not that interesting to me at the moment because it's counter trend. And if we get a bounce, we might eventually break this line to go up to the 50 fib which then should be resistance for more downside. So that is the, uh, the tree of, uh, how do you call it, the, um, the tree of decisions path, the potential paths of least resistance on this audio is DMIP. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to take those drawings off then, so I hope that's all clear. If not, let me know. Let's take a look at, uh, let me take a look quickly, still maybe the one hour chart.
Alrighty. What else to look at? Maybe you're odd. Whoa. Too many fibs. <laughs> Ton of fibs, so let me take them all off because it will be uh, a lot of work to retrace what all of those fibs are. So, well, we got a good chart pattern on the Eurod. A wedge. Maybe we, uh, we can take a look at uh, try to find some added shoulders and reversal patterns as well. But this is looks more like a continuation pattern. If you look at the four-hour chart, it looks more like well, it is an uptrend, correction uptrend, and this is a chart pattern uh, of a wedge or triangle, which could be easily, let's see, A, B, C, so maybe still a D and E before we move up. <clears throat> Pretty funky movement, in fact. This uh, on a 50-minute world, if you look uh, at uh, the NFP reaction, up, down, <laughs> very volatile there. Um, these spikes here. So we'll be waiting for the break of the uptrend line, especially. <clears throat> but if we do break this uh, bottom line, then uh, we could see reversal trade as well. Obviously. The long to moving average here providing support, as we can see. So if we break that, there could be reversal potential. If we continue up, there will be with the trend potential. I think the same setup is on the pound odd as well. Let me take a look. Kind of a similar kind of triangle. It just looks a bit different, that's all. But if you look at the oscillator, this is still a very strong oscillator. And only now have we returned to the zero line. So to me, a break of this top is, is likely on the pound odd. And here, too, looking for a break of this chart pattern to the upside. Let me take a look at the euro odd if it has the same four-hour oscillator reading. No, it's a bit different. In fact, here it returned to the zero line and has divergence. So, but it doesn't mean that necessarily it will reverse back to the moving average. Only after it breaks the band could we expect that necessarily, right? Then we have the confirmation, although there is that potential, obviously. So the euro audit is a bit different. Let's take a look at other patterns, uh, but in the meantime, I got a question, how to handle spikes when it comes to chart patterns? Yeah, that uh, every trader could do differently. Because that, of course, there is some discretionary element. You, you, you could either use the tops of the wicks. And the, I, I don't mind to draw partially through them, especially a wick, if the overall pattern has more balance, or the trend line has a better angle, or the trend line has more hits because of that or is more spaced out because of that, but there has to be some advantage. If the wicks can be used, and it looks just as good as a trend line that goes through the wicks, then you could draw both, in fact, probably. There's nothing wrong with having two trend lines. Um, <clears throat> and probably both will get respected, in fact, but if, if you look at this, I, I wouldn't mind to necessarily draw through this bit, indeed. But uh, the other way of doing that is taking that as a top and doing it this way indeed and waiting for the third hit here like that. Now if we look at the one hour chart, looking at the moving averages, this looks like a bullish candle already in fact on the euro odd. 
but because we, we went down all the way pretty deeply here, this is probably not going to get an immediate follow through. This is like has traveled enough. It's probably due for a correction now. If I look at this setup. So just like if you compare it, for example, to previous price action, something like this. It had a move up and you get that bull flag. Now, the, you did get follow through. The follow through didn't go that far, though. But still, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for here is this, just like here, before we get that upside. So once that happens, if you look at the 50-minute chart, the next break of a 50-minute fractal could already be a be a good one, in fact, despite this trend line, because it only has two hits, this trend line. Maybe more important is just a horizontal level, in fact. But the thing is, when you're having a big impulse like that, and you have a box like this, um, it's you would like to trade it with the trend, but it is difficult sometimes if the correction is so flat because the horizontal resistance is close by as well. That's why corrections that are a bit steeper is easier because if you break a trend line, you still have more space up to the next resistance, which makes it easier. Sorry, I took that pattern a bit, sorry, I took that drawing maybe a bit too soon away. What I meant is that if you have something steeper like this, not that steep, but something like this, you are drawn again. Then you have, when you break, look at the green arrow, you can see more space up to the top. So we need a bit more caution, maybe with the sideways chart patterns like this. And therefore, if, if one takes a break here um, of a 15-minute fractal, then trail stopping it makes sense because at least so that one reduces the risk if we cannot break through that resistance or waiting for price to break through that resistance first then make a smaller bull flag and the next break could be the other option as well. Yen is very looking very funny with this massive correction, and uh, that correction is uh, is not easy to uh, to define in a way because it has so many ups and downs. Uh, Richard, is that the odd yen you're talking about, or the still the euro odd? If it's the euro odd, sometimes indeed chart panels like that uh, could could lead to a reversal, definitely. So there's 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 definitely validity at this point to look at both lines indeed. Sorry, both lines here. But in more cases they, they are continuations, but definitely not all. Maybe seventy thirty. All righty. Let's see. Any let me 
hunt for some chart patterns maybe that uh, could be interesting. I would say if, 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 for example, if the New Zealand pushes up here, then we could see a potential for a head and shoulders here as well, for example, right? If we push up like that already, that could, that could happen. But that still uh, needs some time probably. That could be double top, especially if you see a huge wick like that. That was during probably during NFP, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's a pretty. Uh, that's that usually we'll see some follow through for downside. Stopped at the minus two seven two, went up to the fifty, down to the minus two seven two. Looks like we can go to the minus six eighteen. I would say. Pound cat could be some kind of a head and shoulders. It's kind of like not totally in harmony or, or, or really in sync as a classical head and shoulders, but roughly speaking, we could see something like that. The official neckline would probably be something like this, though, not the one I have here. Although we were looking yesterday and saying a break of that could lead to downside. That, that's indeed what's happening kind of had a rising wedge here as well, if you look at it from a chart predator perspective. So rising wedge and potential other shoulders. But uh, we don't have that version, so that's the only thing that is a bit worrying. The, the, the thing that is true, though, is that, of course, that we're at the big minus 618 target on the pound cat. Let's take a look at gold one-hour chart. Uh, yeah, that, that looks like a, a bull flag, indeed. Uh, uh, Sar Sarunas, Sarunas. It does it? Uh, I I remember we were looking at this and saying we're at a, a resistance spot, but price maintaining and remaining bullish. Price action pushing through the resistance with a very very big impulse indeed. Um, I'm not sure at this stage still, yes, it is a bull flag. Um, I'm just trying to contemplate whether, uh, whether it is indeed a, something we could uh, act upon, in my opinion. This was a big impulse. This was a pretty big price action signal. From that point of view, indeed, this break maybe not too surprising. Didn't think about it that way because this was pretty bullish. This was pretty bullish during NF NFP. So maybe some follow through on that is actually logical. Like uh, some other examples we've shown today. But at the moment, yes, it is a bull flag. So I would say, but the thing is, I would rather wait for a break of that bull flag. Some traders do trade differently the bull flag. They try to take the bottom of the bull flag, um, which is possible here too. But because the break is still relatively fresh and new, and also if you look at the fact that if you put a fib from here to here, we're at the minus 272 target, plus we're at the long-term moving averages, we could also still be at a resistance spot, in fact. Therefore, I would still be more cautious of upside and really, really, really rather wait for the break of the bull flag than trying to attempt to, to trade differently the bull flag, for example, from, from trading it, like trading it from the bottom of the flag.
Let me just check some other perspectives here. We were saying a bounce here is, is, could be happening because of this bigger support. That's what it's doing. Mm. Definitely this could also be the first attempt for higher highs and higher lows. But uh, I would like to see really a break, breakout instead of tr attempting uh, earlier entries because this could also still in fact be retracement as I said. There's, I'm trying to see it from a different perspective but Let me put this Fib on, for example. Kind of stopped at the 618. So we're, we're at a, I would say we're pretty much at a decision point, though. A break above this, then we're starting to uh, definitely build an uptrend. If we don't break above here and then we move down, then we could still be actually a breakout trade to the downside could occur, and this was just a retracement. So I would be wait, waiting mode, basically, uh, for one of the two. Kiwi, let's take a look at that. I think I already looked at it. Ah, yeah, but only just briefly, indeed. I'm saying that this could be an head and shoulders potential on the New Zealand dollar, one hour chart. We would need a bounce here, though, and the neckline would be this double bottom. Put the uh, green line there at the double bottom, right there, and uh, I'll put a red line at the potential head and shoulders spot. So if we see some upside like that, and this could become a head and shoulders for maybe more downside like that. In the meantime, though, we are in an uptrend channel, as we said yesterday. And what happened since yesterday? Well, yeah, we had a bit of upside, but then back down to the same level. So nothing much happened, in fact. Four-hour chart attempted to break above this green line, but failed. What we can do now is adjust the green line, the resistance line to this. If we do break above that, there's no head and shoulders. And that we'll probably go and test these tops then. Is that a wide open space? Not really. But there would be some pips on the intraday time level from 83.20 to 84-ish. Right there where I have the green arrow. If we do have a head and shoulders, uh, it could be interesting attempt to short maybe at the head and shoulders level with a very small stop loss and close and reverse almost in a way when it breaks to the upside. But you know that I, I'm not an expert in trading head and shoulders, so if we break the green line, of course, then we have the confirmation of the trend channel breaking, the purple trend channel, the purple uptrend channel breaking. And the head and shoulders may be playing out. And um, moving potentially to the downside. OK, Richard. Yeah, I'm sure there are different ways of, of, of putting a trend channel here. Um, I could put it like this, for example, to incorporate more the bottom. Something like that is possible. If you look at the four-hour world, you could even put a trend channel, indeed, uh, something like this on the chart. Something like that, maybe you have. 
You could even draw it differently. You could draw it as I have these green lines already here, like that. Something like this. So all in all, I think they probably um, pretty choppy relatively in any case, especially if you look at the day chart, it is quite messy. If you look at the one hour chart, New Zealand dollar, we see a uh, bullish price action off of this bottom. So maybe we'll see in the meantime some upside up to the red line, but it's a very small trade. Plus, the 50-minute world is definitely moving down a lot. Ah, right, cool. Let's take a look at Richard. Has to, has to say or has to show, in fact. Better said. Four-hour chart. Yep, that's a good trend line, too. Uh, in that regard, we've broken out of it. Something to, to consider, indeed. Definitely. Good job. Let's take a look at that. I think it was four hour, wasn't it? Yeah, I adjusted it now like this. But um, let me see how you had it, in fact. Yeah, if you take the very top, indeed, Uh, don't, yeah, you, you cut through a bit of this wick. If you place it to the top of the wick, it would just have a slightly different angle. But this, of course, are very detailed details. But um, then it kind of like price is cutting through these, this, this chart pattern about halfway. But that could be an attempt indeed to break out. But at the moment, price is... I wouldn't say it's a clear breakout. Here was not a clear breakout, at least, because we had a, uh, a wick. This could be an attempt, indeed, and a hook back. And um, that, therefore, it could be even worth a, a long, indeed, right here. Just be aware of the resistance still. If we break above the resistance, that would be more of a confirmation, most likely, or even a scale-in for people who attempted longs earlier. The reason why I took that, uh, by the way, I took this trend line off is because I didn't sense that price, the reason why is that it didn't seem like price kind of respected that line. Um, but that depends from, I mean, it's still valuable information, but if it doesn't respect it that neatly, then I tend to look for something else. But that's not always the best process, by the way. It, it definitely makes sense to, to uh, it could also be uh, very valuable to keep both trend lines on. But often enough, because then there would be too many trend lines on the charts and would, everything becomes clustered, I, uh, I tend to try to minimize the, uh, the lines so that it becomes more, kind of more viewable in a way, to a certain degree. But, but good stuff there, Richard. Thanks for that. So with 10 minutes to go, maybe you have some questions. I will have to push off um, very pretty soon, in fact, um, unfortunately. But by all means, all questions, we still have 10 minutes. So by all means, let me know if you have any questions. Maybe we can take, do you see yourself any chart patterns that could be interesting, maybe? Any questions regarding chart patterns? Uh, dollar yen, okay. What I'm looking for, five days. Five days. I'm not sure you mean five days from now or in the upcoming five days. I'm not sure, um, you know, five days from, upcoming five days, okay. Well, it's, usually I don't look 
five days, it, it's, you know, it's, I wouldn't make my forecasts for my, what I do for myself like that time sequence, like I expect this from day one, two, three, four, and five. Um, most of the time I just say it's, it's not that time related, it's just I look at the most one or two, let's say two, three most uh, closest options for the currency. So most of the time I look, if there's a decision tree, I want to look at these options kind of, and then I stop. Um, so, and you know, what, how long it takes for time to make these choices varies. So sometimes it's shorter or, or faster. But uh, in general, I would be in a waiting mode, to be honest, because uh, of this bigger resistance. Uh, in my heart, I am bullish. I would love to trade it to the upside, but my mind is saying that I need to wait and, and get that confirmation. Um, but I do think that a support level here seems likely. Let me make that green. Oh, yeah, thanks, Richard. We we're going to take a look uh, at, the, at the pound, of course. I almost forgot. Uh, this support level anywhere in here seems uh, seems pretty likely to me. Will we get a break immediately of that bigger daily 103.70 resistance? Doesn't have to be because we could also make a chart pattern like this as a, a range or wedge. So we can bounce here, move up, find resistance again, move down, find support again. Something like that could happen. So for me, I need to break. I need a break of 103.70 to become very bullish or a bounce from price action signals here for a bounce to be bullish as well. That's what I'm looking for basically in the next uh, few days. Pound dollar. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It has a bit of a wick. So I'm not too certain of that. It's not as, uh, as bearish as, uh, as I was actually thinking it would be. Um, so So I'd be careful with the uh, shorts. I wouldn't short now. It's, it isn't bearish enough. I know it's a small detail, but it's an important detail for myself at least. Um, this is still flat here. If it would have been fully bearish, they would have turned as well. Um, now that might not be that, in, that that important for you, I can imagine, but I've done a lot of testing on that, and for, for me it is. So. Usually, if it does, if you have a bearish candle here like that, it does signal more follow through. Uh, even though later on it could turn from from this level, for example. So I would be careful personally, and probably if we don't, if we if we make some chart pattern like that, I would even start looking for uh, an upside potential. If or if we make a chart pattern like that, we can even look for a break either way. If, But uh, a short isn't a bad idea, by the way, not necessarily. I mean, from my perspective, because I'm always so focused on the trend, it uh, it's something that I wouldn't trade. But um, we could see, of course, somewhere here a potential pause and a pullback, even though we get more upside. But the potential space, to me, seems limited. So. I would therefore not be interested. I would only be interested in downside trade if the one hour chart really would have been a bearish close and I see more follow through at least to, the, to this level, which now doesn't seem as likely as it does or would have been with a bearish candle, so therefore less appealing to me. Also, the, what could happen is if we get a very bullish rebound here, it could easily break up like that and then make a bull flag for more upside. And. Uh, a bullish rebound seems more likely now with this wick 
but also just because of the longer time frames like a four hour chart and etc uh, big oscillator reading the weekly breakout all that is bullish let's take a look maybe Richard has something else has a dis different perspective for us so let's take a look Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know um, I can see your point, Richard, but I have lost a lot of trades like that. Let me say it this way. So, 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 so many. So, so, so many. So, for me, that, that seems dangerous. I understand the, the logic, though. And this time it could work. But viewing resistances, to me, when you have really a lot of bullish signals on a four hour chart um, and then looking at resistances on a, on a one hour is is um, the odds of that are not that high let me say it at least that way and because of, of course it's always about percentages at best I think the edge here that, that one has is small if not even negative in my opinion but I could be totally wrong and this one could prove to be very right because it's not about being right, but about being pro very profitable. But that's just my experience. That's why. But this one could be different. The, by the way, um, it be interesting to see how this candle closes again uh, because if it, if it breaks last hours high there's a, a bigger chance it's bullish if we get a small doji here and another small doji well we can't have a small doji already because price is already halfway well we can have a doji we can have something like like this still and then again a small doji the chances of bearishness are increasing though but because of this wick I know it sounds funny maybe but because of this wick I would want to see how this one hour candle behaves and if we can break last hours high. If we do, then it looks more bullish. If we can't do that two hours, it looks a bit more bearish. So that would be my view on that. Um, your dollar is also getting the bearish and bullish rebound, in fact. As I said, we have to wait, we really have to wait for this trend line to break with a full, full bearish candle. Full bearish candle. And we have to wait for a close of the candle because look what kind of wick we have here. It's still a retrace from our upside. And um, not that I had confidence in trading that necessarily, although we can see, unfortunately, that in a way that it would have worked actually decently. But uh, I was more looking for, as I, you know, my primary bread and butter is still uh, actually breakout trades. So for me, a breakout trade would be above this 15 minute fractal um, with the stop loss here. Although I would have uh, liked to have, to have had the break um, with a shorter stop loss, in fact, somewhere like here. But unfortunately, we retraced deeper before we went up again. Now, if you look at the euro dollar, you can see this is a pretty big wick off of the trend line bounce. The breakout has a good chance, in fact, of uh, getting some pips there up to 138, 138.20. And the very bearish kind of scenario that was unfolding just got kind of like, didn't get the follow through. And that's why shorting against the trend is so dangerous and waiting for at least that bearish candlestick is, is good. Pound might be different. The euro definitely didn't break support, but pound did break support. That is true. But if you look at it from any wave perspective, that's why I said ABCs, the wave Cs, could be sometimes impulsive on a lower time frame. But on a higher time frame, could be just a correction for trend continuation. It will also be interesting to see how this four hour candles closes. If we get a big wick like that on the four hour, 
then it shows support on a pretty big time frame, which also leads to a potential continuation of uptrend. So that will be something very interesting to see also how that closes um, as well. Plus, don't forget that we said that band is often support. The price is kind of using that as support. So we are on a euro dollar is a bit more clear, I would agree. Pound dollar is a bit more uh, a gray area, maybe. Um, but so I would be more in a waiting mode. Waiting mode. Let's let's wait a bit more on the pound. Let's wait for a bit more price action during the day to see which of the two could be more likely. We can follow up tomorrow, and you know go through together. Um, hour by hour, you know, how it has developed throughout the day. Really interesting. Um, but that sometimes happens. That's why looking, that's what happens sometimes, for example, if you look at the euro dollar. Uh, lo I mean, even myself, I, this looked like an impulse. So. The first thing that follows my mind is, especially if price is moving so slowly to the upside, is follow through, right? Like we have with the pound dollar, only on different time frames. But if you then look from the weekly perspective, this downside actually could just be a retracement from our upside, and within a kind of this uptrend here. So those are sometimes difficult things to combine those time frames. Uh, I got really thrown. I got a bit thrown off. I mean, not thrown off. I knew that it could still be upside, but if you see a big thing like this, you do think there should be some follow through. Didn't happen. So, yeah, and that's because probably this was just a retracement on on the weekly, whereas on the daily it looks like a major thrust. So yeah, those things can uh, can happen. Well, I really have to leave now, unfortunately. It's, uh, but um, thanks for being here, first of all, and uh, hope to see you tomorrow. And wish you all great trading in the meantime. Okay. Cheers. Have a good day.